the way. Weary days. Hot. Nine days. Not a sign of another boat. Another human. Oh, look. Minutes. Nine days. Open boat. I can't believe yesterday. Night. 1934. Nine days ago, I thought I'd get a scoop. How well I remember. I talked Winston Everly into going with me, using his private yacht far out into the Atlantic, where things were happening. Together, we defied precautions. Offered ourselves as bait for some unseen devil. Beneath the waters of the eastern sea. And that was nine days ago. Well? I've been on deck an hour. There's nothing. I told you it was useless, didn't I? I'm still not convinced that it is. Something has happened to those three missing ships. Certainly something has happened to them. They simply sank, that's all. But it isn't all. It's plain nonsense. Thinking those three boats went down with all hands on board with not a clue to their disappearance. Besides, what about their radios? Not a distress signal was picked up. All three cases. I know, but that's still not a sign something. Well... Something unusual has happened? Well, just use your head, man. This is 1934. Boats just don't go down in the Atlantic without someone somewhere knowing about it. These three certainly did. Just disappeared into nothingness without leaving a trace. And I still say something went wrong in each case that can be explained in a natural, normal manner. And I say that you don't know what you're talking about. Well, <laughs> don't be so violent in what you have to say. After all, I've gone this far with you. I might as well see it through. I, I'm sorry. Just, just anxious, that's all. Yes. So am I. There's no sense biting each other's heads off. We may need them before we're through with this. I've set the automatic pilot. All's clear. Good. I'll go up on deck and have a turn at the wheel after a bit. Game of rummy? No, I don't think so, thanks. Poker? No, thanks. Hmm. Got a cigarette? Uh, yes, somewhere. That last ship, the SS Clara Anna, went down just about where we are now. The other two somewhere in this vicinity. Oh, here's a smoke. Thanks. Why do you say the ships went down in this vicinity, Adams? No one knows where they went down. What I mean is they were last heard from within a vicinity of, well, 50-mile radius here. All of them. I admit it would be a strange coincidence for all three of them to disappear in such a small area, but, well, stranger things than that have happened at sea. It's not a coincidence. Something has happened to those boats which none of us can explain. Something that isn't ordinary. Mr. Everly. What's that? Um, Brown in the radio room on the talkback system. Mr. Everly. Uh, hand me that microphone, will you, Adams? Uh, sure, here. Yes, Brown? Just got a report that all passengers on those three remaining ships have been reported safe. You mean the boats have been found? No, sir. The passengers from all three ships were sent adrift in the lifeboat. Well, what's happened to them? Well, none of them seem to know. They're all in perfect health, though. But they're all in a stupefied condition, as though they've been drugged. That's strange. <laughs> Any further news? No, sir, none. I just picked it up from a news broadcast from the States. Thanks, Brown. Now, what do you think, Everly? Strange. All hands from all three ships set adrift in the lifeboats, and none of them knowing what happened to them. And all of them in a drug condition. That doesn't make sense. No one could drug three boatloads of passengers. Through the drinking water? 
Uh, half of them don't drink water when they're aboard. Still, they were drugged. But how, man? How? That's another mystery I'd like to clear up. Then perhaps you can. What? I say. Where did you come from? Who are you? My name is Siegfried. How did you get on board? Where did you come from? One question at a time, if you please. I came on board in the same manner I boarded the other boats lately. The others? The three others. You... You're responsible for what happened to those boats? Yes, I am. But how? Why? I needed them for my own purposes. You destroyed them? I sent them to the bottom of the Atlantic. I repeat, you destroyed them? Quite the contrary. I used them to a very good advantage. What do you mean? Would you like to know? I certainly would. Then I shall be glad to show you, if you wish. It will entail a trip to the bottom of the sea. You're talking like a madman. Am I? I regret you think so. Because I assure you, I am by no means demented in the slightest degree. Those people set adrift in the lifeboats, apparently drugged. What happened to them? It's naturally best that they do not know what happened to them. They were not harmed. They were carefully guarded against danger. And no harm shall come to them. But the boats? The cost of the boats and the inconveniences which naturally arise through their, their loss have all been taken care of. And each passenger has been repaid ten times for everything he was forced to leave behind when placed in the lifeboat. I don't understand all this. Who are you, anyway? I shall tell you soon. But now we must make haste. Time is most valuable. What are you going to do? You told me you wished to see what I did with the three boats. I'm ready to grant your wishes. And to take you to the depths of the Atlantic. But, uh... You see, I need your boat. My boat? Yes. I've come to take it. I welcome you to go along with me, if you wish. But where? What are you going to do with the boat? I've already told you I need it. Together with the others, I have use for it. At the bottom of the sea. Ah, that's perfectly ridiculous. No one has need for a boat down there. I have. How do you propose to take us there? I cannot tell you that. You will merely do as I say. I will take you down beneath the surface safely. And I will return you safely. How can we be certain of that? I have given my word. You will find that the word of Siegfried always has been kept. Down through the ages. The centuries. Centuries? Hundreds of thousands of centuries. Do you mean that you're actually a creature from the bottom of the sea? I'm a man like you. I'm not a creature. Here, drink this. What's that? Merely what I gave the others. It's quite harmless. I don't want it. Take it away. I assure you that if you don't consume the potion of your own will, I have the means of seeing to it that you do. Better do what he says, Everly. Here. I'll take the first draft. You're a wise man, Mr. Adams. Oh. You know my name. I know everything. Now the potion. Has agreed. All right. Now, Mr. Eberly, for your radio man and mechanic have already been set adrift. They will arrive safely ashore within a few days. None the worse for their experience. Mr. Eberly? No. No, no, I won't take it. Take it away. Get away from me. It's too late to change your mind now. You will drink all of this. No, 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 I don't want it. I give you one more opportunity. No, I refuse. I'm no fool. I won't take it. Very well, then, Mr. Eberly. Ah. There. <laughs> what have you done to... I told you I had the means of compelling you to take the mixture. Now it's well with both you and Mr. Adams. I shall take your boat... And the two of you along with it. Uh, Are you quite all right now, Mr. Adams? Yes. Yes, I, I guess so. Where are we? Where I promised to take you. The bottom of the Atlantic. It's so strange here. Light. Like the light above. This is almost like the place up there. Surely you're jesting. This is no spot beneath the sea. Oh, but I assure you it is, definitely. 
<laughs> ah, your stubborn companion is about to to rejoin us. And what what's happened? Oh, Adams, are you all right? Yes, he's quite all right. And you, sir? I. What in the world did you do to us? I gave both of you an ancient formula. One which induces your spirit to leave your body momentarily. Then I brought you here and permitted your spirits to return again. But where are we? You are 50,000 leagues beneath the sea. Why, we can't be. <laughs> so your companion thought, Mr. Eberly. You're both mistaken. There's no water, no seaweed, no sign of underwater creatures. No, indeed. That's because you've been brought not to just an ordinary place. What do you mean? place is this? This is the ancient continent of Atlantis. Atlantis, you say? I've never heard of the place. That's because you're not a student. Your friend, Mr. Adams, seems to know quite a bit about it. Yes. An ancient continent, once located in the Atlantic Ocean, thousands upon thousands of years ago. And which disappeared beneath the surface of the Atlantic. That sinking of the continent began more than a million years ago, according to our scientists. And so it did. Slowly over thousands of years, Atlantis began to decline, to be claimed by the waters. A new land began to rise. South America, your continent, they had no existence in the days of Atlantis. And far to the west lay the mighty land of Mu. But what about you? Well, finally... After hundreds of thousands of years, all of Atlantis had been consumed by the hungry waters, except the island of Poseidonis, so named after the god of the sea. Yes, I know that. Poseidonis was destroyed by volcanic eruption. Not destroyed entirely, but the volcano's disturbance sent our land far beneath the sea, and that was 9,000 years before the death of Plato. 11,000 years ago. Yes, roughly speaking. But you say this land of yours wasn't actually destroyed. No. There were in our land wise men from Greece. And together with our wise ones, they foresaw the volcanic disturbance and the seeking of Poseidonis. Yes. This is the ancient island of Poseidonis. Last home of mighty Atlantis. Yes. And you have existed here all this time. There is no time here. No death. Only life. Amazing. Now we are fighting to preserve our life. Our civilization. After these 11,000 years, our existence is threatened by the, the vicious waters. What do you mean? I mean, we suddenly found ourselves without sufficient materials to keep our underwater fortress safe against the water's destruction. Wait a minute. Now I'm beginning to understand. We needed metal, and lots of it, to use for reinforcing the portions of our continent which was threatened by the water. And that's where the three ships went, and Eberly's yacht. That's correct, Mr. Adams. In our desperation, I saw no other solution. I chose the boats containing the most metal, went aboard, and sought to the complete safety of the passengers. And then our men brought the ships down here to be dismantled and to salvage the metal. Here, I, I will show you. A sliding panel there. Half of the room sliding away. You see out there? The men of Atlantis putting the final touches upon the patchwork that will make our fortress secure for hundreds of years to come. Thanks to the metal from your continent. Why, this place is just as modern and advanced as our civilization. You will find in many instances that it's more advanced. Now I will show you that we are as honest and as upright as any other people of the world. This is the treasure room of Atlantis. Harvey, look, jewels, gold, and silver, treasures of every sort here. The room is completely filled with valuable treasures. Each passenger on those boats we confiscated received a portion from our treasure room, enough to more than repay him for whatever loss he suffered. 
and the boat owners were paid double the value of their vessels. When you return to the surface above, you will be given a portion likewise in payment for your yacht, Mr. Eberle. I've never seen quite so many valuables together in one place in all my life. Oh, come now. I've shown you the explanation of what has been happening. It's time we refresh ourselves and time you were preparing for your return journey. I knew I could find my way back to this vault. Just look at the treasure hidden here. Chest upon chest of beautiful jewels. Necklaces of pearl. Beads of precious jade. Loose gems and some set in the finest gold. And over there. Bar upon bar of gold and silver. And some strange metal here I, I've never seen before. Oh, a hundred thousand fortunes hidden here. Where no one will ever use them. What's that? The door. The light. Emily. Emily, are you in there? Adams? Yeah, I've been looking for you. Is there any light in here? Yes, just a second. What are you doing in this treasure room? That fellow who calls himself Siegfried says we'll leave here soon, and I'm taking some of this treasure with me. But she said you were to have a portion of it. Uh, yes, and pay. Was enough with you? I'm taking some he won't know about. But you can't. It's not right. What difference does it make? No one will use this stuff. Might as well take some of it where it's as gems as I can. I but no, I have the 11,000 years. I said. He's about in his 11,000th childhood, I'd say. Here, hold these diamonds. But I don't want any part of this. I'll take care of getting them away from here. Beverly, I advise you not to do this. Listen, you came you. You could not conquer the worldly desire to steal our treasures. You will never use them. Nonetheless, they still belong to us. Why not let us take them where they'll do us some good? They're useless laying here. I had intended to give each of you enough of the treasure to make you wealthy me from doing so. Look here, Siegfried. Those are loves to Adams of no better than 10,000 years ago in vice. Kill the same greed and sin and iniquities. Included all evil. And so I gladly send you back where boat to pay for your... You get that before you reach the safe of torture. <laughs> Drift. Oh, will it dazed. Indeed. Big sun. Or food. Unconscious from the bottom of the Moving. Lifting his head. Heavily. Oh. Heavily, man. Oh. Heavily. Still see. Steady, man. Oh. Oh, well, this never ends. Oh, well, torture never ends. Easy, man. Take it easy. Uh, a month. Ten years. Only nine days. Nine days. <laughs> Only nine days. I can't stand it, Harvey. I can't stand it any longer. Save your strength, man. I'm going mad. I can't stand it. There in the bottom of the boat. <laughs> the chest of treasure and payment for my yacht. Emily! <laughs> Emily! What good will it do now? We'll be dead when we reach shore. Oh, no, we'll be dead. 
Steady. But nobody else will get it. What are you going to do? There won't be a left here for anybody else. I'll see to that no one else gets his hands on it. Emily! Keep Jesus out of the rest of that trench. Emily, don't jump! <laughs> no one else will get this. Emily! I'll see Emily! You have heard Convoy for Atlantis, tonight's original tale of dark fantasy by Scott Bishop, originating in the studios of WKY and based upon an idea suggested by Ken Wright. Ben Morris was Harvey Adams, Murillo Schofield took the part of Winston Eberly, and Garland Moss was Siegfried, ruler of Atlantis. Next Friday, Dark Fantasy will be heard over most of these stations 25 minutes earlier. Listen for The Thing from the Darkness from Oklahoma City.